so yeah, I will, I will be talking about DevOps uh, and how to make the operating technology world, the field world, and IT work together without killing each other, hopefully. Uh, so when you look at the, the words and the values that, that define operational technology and information technology, you, you begin to look at different values that are driven by their business imperatives. So for example, information technology is centralized, efficiency, uh, direct control, unlimited bandwidth. It, it's about uh, it's about uptime, it's about providing services, it's about providing them efficiently and quickly. Um, when you look at operating technology, it's safety, stability, distributed, longevity of solution, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Um, it's indirect control, it's over mobile, it's over disconnected, uh, intermittent, and low bandwidth connectivity. So you have very, very different worlds. Um, how do you bring those together and how do you reconcile IT operations that are in, in DevOps mode with OT operations that are in I don't want to change it because it works mode. So the challenges for, for operating technology in the field, for operations, they're focused on uh, you know, efficiency, security, work rules, union rules, culture, skill set, um, and they need to have as part of that solutions that, that fail safe, that meet legal and regulatory requirements and privacy and security. So uh, everything is focused on, on having you know, a, a locomotive that when something goes wrong in the locomotive, it stops instead, of, it, it stops itself, it doesn't accelerate. Um, when you have a lot of distributed solutions, it's very hard to get out there and patch them. Um, you connect them to the internet, as uh, Josh said, you immediately have to start patching them. So how do, you, how do you reconcile those things with IT, which is very predictable, it's got life cycle management, it's relatively secure, they're focused on costs um, and, and process, and, and they're focused on, on tools, frameworks, they're, they're really looking to automate things. They're looking to, to, to use technologies like cloud, agile development, to iterate faster and faster, um, to get to, 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 get to uh, feature velocity going. I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's two opposite worlds. The other thing is, IoT project failure rate is 75%, according to Cisco. Uh, you know, that, that is not acceptable in IT. It's definitely not acceptable in OT. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a failure rate that high with IoT projects is really concerning. You know, why are they, why are they failing? Um, the first is a solution in search of a problem, right? They're, they're, they're going out and they're, they're getting budget and they're trying to apply technology that they've decided on instead of picking a business challenge and solving that business challenge together with IT and OT. Um, there's cultural resistance. The IT guys don't, don't know the OT guys. They don't ever talk. They work in different ways. Um, you know, just culturally in rail, which I've done a lot of work in, the OT guys are, are very blue collar and very you know, uh, grease under the nails. The IT guys um, wear a lot of blue blazers, uh, and uh, you know they're 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 um, just you know very different. So the lack of communication and collaboration between these two groups has to be broken down. So you have to you have to. You know, we talk about DevOps, which is, is bringing Dev and Ops together. You have to bring IT and OT DevOps into a hybrid team together. They have to be working together in that DevOps principle of building things that, that work, building and, and building them in a way that is manageable uh, over the long term, building them right and then managing them, your, you know, through those groups. 
um, because otherwise you're going to have IT building solutions that either don't work, rely on 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 you know back doors or rely on versions of firmware that may be changed, uh, you know, those sorts of things. And then you really have a lot of issues with people underestimating the, the amount of complexity that you have in these projects. You know, you go into a project, you, you've built the perfect IoT platform, and you go and implement, and you realize that, oh, well, there's Instead of two types of device, there's 83 types of device, and half of them are not patchable, and they're using some protocol that you, you don't know how to transform. So there's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff that you don't expect. Uh, so more than 60% of the projects that are out there, again, due to Cisco, or from Cisco, um, are much more complex than anticipated. Um, you know, some of the real barriers when you look at, at uh, these projects are things like trained staff, fear of security vulnerabilities. Um, and, you know, one that, that you wouldn't necessarily think of, but it's true, which is identifying a project that has an ROI that can be measured and that you can have a goal that you, you succeed in. So, you begin to look at things like Industry 4.0, you, you look at smart factory, smart production system projects. Um, you look at, at uh, product life cycle development um, within vendors uh, being really important. So, you know, you, you've got to choose um, where you're going to add value, what you're going to work on, how quickly you're going to iterate. Um, but hardware is not going to change as quickly as software. So even if you create this great new software project either internally or as a product to your customers, you've, you've got to understand that that's not going to necessarily be adopted in, in, a, you know, in a month or a year. I mean, we think that getting rid of XP is difficult. Uh, getting rid of XP is nothing compared to getting rid of OPC DA PLCs that are out there and have been out there for 20 years. So for design principles, you need to have interoperability. Uh, devices, objects, machines, people, everything needs to be able to, to interoperate with each other. And, you know, standards-based choices are the way to do this um, so that everything that you create is created based on the standard. Um, the other is to abstract away um, the IT and the OT world through, some, through digital twins, which is basically a state machine um, that you have that has APIs and has data models and everything that a developer expects. They start working against that digital twin. The digital twin then will return information to them uh, it will allow them to make configuration changes if they're authorized to do it, and the configuration changes make sense. Um, so, you know, digital twins are a key part of this. <clears throat> uh, flexible environment. You, you, have to, you have to have flexibility in process, in, in how people are organized, how people work. You can't have, my job is to turn on this switch, and his job is to turn off this switch. People have to stop thinking of themselves in, in those terms. You have to have real-time capabilities to be able to, to make changes when it's required. Um, and that's especially true in the IT world when you deploy software in the IT world and you break IT capabilities that managers or, uh, you know, that the, that the shop floor it has begun to use. And that's the thing we don't think about is once we deploy these IT tools and they begin to be used by the OT world, the, the shop floor in the field, then if we do something that breaks an IT tool that, that interfaces with an OT, to, OT piece of equipment or tool, um, it, it causes real problems. So you have to have real-time capability for fixes, real-time capabilities for, uh, for backing out. You have to have the ability to, to take take care of those tools that are, that are used specifically for operations. Um, you have to be focused on what the customer needs, what the, what the service is, 
um, and use that as part of the business use case. Um, you need to look at um, modularity. You need to build things into, you know, in, in my opinion, into microservices so that you can break these functions down and you can, through DevOps and through Agile, you're making you know, small changes quickly to these independent functions and services rather than making, having a big monolithic application and using that, having to go in and do a six month or a 12 month development cycle against a, you know, a big monolithic application. Um, it allows you to, to make changes quickly and it allows you to back those changes out quickly as well. And then there's adaptability as well. You have to be adaptable to um, trying new things, to new ways of communication, to new ways of working, um, so that the IT people understand the needs of the OT world, uh, they understand the requirements that they're under, and the OT world is able to communicate their needs and their wants as part of that. Uh, Kai? Thanks, James.